Today we are going to discuss about gangrene, the basics of gangrene. When the cell is not getting enough amount of uh, oxygen, it is known as the hypoxia and first of all cell goes into the stage of the reversible injury. But it continues if oxygen is not uh, delivered to the cell then these cells goes into the stage of the irreversible injury. And if it goes into the stage of the irreversible injury still further progression pathogenesis occurs and it goes into the stage of the necrosis. Yes, the necrosis cellular death followed by the inflammation necrosis and further when the necrosis followed by putrefaction necrosis followed by putrefaction that is known as the gangrene into the pathology a particular some amount of the pathology you can say one stage is changed the name is changed just like initially reversible injury then the irreversible necrosis and further when the cellular damage occurs so you can easily say that uh, necrosis followed by putrefaction two, two things together known as the gangrene these gangrenes are basically classified into the main two types what are those two types one which is known as the dry gangrene and another is known as the wet gangrene the name itself suggests dry that means the organ in this case of a gangrene is a shrunken that organ becomes dark that organ becomes black colored why these occurred so what is the pathogenesis behind the dry gangrene in this tissue you can easily say that this part of the tissue is blacked here the great toe is blackened why it appears black in color we will just see here so in the dry gangrene most commonly the arterial supply of that tissue is reduced yes that means the blood supply of particular part is reduced. It most commonly occurs in case of the atherosclerosis. As you all know, the artery, the lumen is shortened, then it will lead to the reduced blood supply to the particular organ. In case of the Raynaud's phenomena, in case of the Burgess disease, these are all conditions in which, in case of thromboangitis obliterans, that means the blood supply which is going towards the particular part when it is blocked then tissue is not getting enough amount of uh, blood that is goes into the stage of the hypoxia ischemia reversible irreversible necrosis and then gangrene but why it appears black and you always remember the rbc which are already present over that part that goes hemolyzed those are hemolyzed and then it releases the hemoglobin here mostly uh, the bacteria cannot survive much because the blood supply is very much less so bacterial growth is very much less in case of a dry gangrene but even though the small uh, bacteria which are over there they release a hydrogen sulfide from the hemoglobin there is a presence of uh, iron these iron combines with this sulfide and then for that forms the iron sulfide and the color of the iron sulfide is uh, blackish in nature so when the particular uh, chemical when not throwing any light back that appears black to so these iron sulfide absorbing all the light and it appears as a blackish in color the beauty of this dry gangrene is there these dry gangrene continuously grow onto the upward part mostly it starts from the periphery and it goes towards the upper part and up to what part when until the blood supply is uh, intact so uh, the line of demarcation is very much clear in case of the dry gangrene. The dry gangrene progress up to the particular site until it gets the proper amount of uh, blood. So that's all about the dry gangrene. Now let's understand the wet gangrene. Wet gangrene mostly occurs because of the venous blockage venous blockage that means the artery is intact so the blood is uh, continuously to that uh, supplied to this particular part we will take the example of the intestine mostly uh, wet gangrene occurs in case of a soft tissue intestine even though the lower limb can also goes into the stage of the wet gangrene uh, most commonly in case of diabetes mellitus uh, wet gangrene can result 
so when the venous blood is blocked and uh, then the artery is still uh, coming and taking the blood then particular part is flooded with the blood that is flooded with the blood so the oxygen is very much high and uh, bacteria gets very good atmosphere for the growing so in case of a wet gangrene the bacterial growth is very much high and the bacteria then grow multiply and uh, then it goes into the blood and can result into the septicemia so most common complication of the wet gangrene is septicemia and septicemia is more leads to the death so wet gangrene more dangerous you can see here it is a more common in bowel mostly venous obstruction can result list of an arterial oxygen or uh, obstruction and here the organ was dry in case of the uh, dry gangrene you can say the organ was a very much a shrunken black and here the organ is a soft swollen and a dark it is rotten dark in color here putrefaction is limited because the bacterial growth was very much less but in case of the wet gangrene there is a high amount of a bacterial growth is there here line of demarcation was clearly visible but here the proper exact line of demarcation is not there because this is flooded with the fluid bacteria here fail to survive here so much amount of bacteria is there right and here the septicemia chances are little but here the septicemia chances are very much high so wet gangrene can be more dangerous into the wet gangrene there is another type which is known as the gas gangrene so gas gangrene is nothing uh, gas gangrene it is also the type of the wet gangrene it occurs mostly because of the which bacteria then always remember uh, they are the gram positive uh, uh, bacilli what are the name of those bacilli clostridium clostridium having the tetany perfringes botulinism but which clostridium result uh, mainly uh, progress in case of a uh, gas gangrene the name of uh, is clostridium perfringes yes clostridium perfringes mainly goes uh, into the stage of a uh, uh, gas uh, gangrene here what this bacteria do into your lower limb when this bacteria are anaerobic bacteria they grow just beneath the skin into the subcutaneous tissue uh, they uh, use the glucose very much amount and uh, produce pyruvate then the lactate and produce a gas and these gas is spread just beneath the skin subcutaneous tissue and when we compress it it gives a sound bubble like sound yes that's why it is known as the gas gangrene because these bacteria are mainly producing the gas and these gas then results into the necrosis and followed by putrefaction that means gangrene so usually uh, when the gas gangrene occurs these parts also become uh, swollen edematous as well as it results very much painful so gas bubble is there that's why it is known as the gas gangrene so that was all about the gangrene hope you all have understood the gangrene it is nothing just a progressive stage of the damage to the tissue necrosis followed by putrefaction Thanks for listening.